Hello and welcome back to Computer Networks, a systems approach, chapter one. Uh, in the last video, we talked about a bunch of terminology around computer networks and uh, yeah, that's really to provide a foundation for us as we start looking at some of the, uh, the further issues as we go through. And uh, so in this video, we're looking at a, a couple of slides around making cost-effective use of resources by sharing them. And this is actually quite important because one of the, uh, the key pieces with the computer network uh, is that you know, we've talked about scale already, that they can actually be tremendously large. You could have uh, you know, a small network which is then connected to other small networks, and those small networks then connect you know, for a larger network that connects to other larger networks. And so there's this whole idea of being able to recursively connect bunches of uh, networks together in a structure to make this global scale at the highest level. And at that highest level, if we weren't able to reuse and share resources efficiently, then the infrastructure cost would just be uh, completely insane. It would be like needing to have a separate phone line between every house that wants to communicate to every other house in the world. And so this is uh, this is nonsense. Instead, what we do is we make sure that we can have enough links between, for example, different towns, different provinces, different countries, so that those connections can be made when they're needed. Uh, and so to achieve that, we have to have these efficient ways to use the resources. So, uh, you know, circuit switching was used in the past for the phone network for this. Uh, with the internet, we use packet switching. And so let's have a little bit of a, a, a deeper look at that. So we have links and we have the, the nodes that want to communicate to each other. So for example, you know, S1 might want to communicate to R1 and S2 might want to communicate to R2 and S3 might want to communicate to R3. And these are connected by two switches. Uh, so the first switch, switch one, is going to have to in some way multiplex. So this is to combine the traffic coming from S1, S2, and S3 into a stream that can go down the single connection between switches one and two. And then switch two will have to demultiplex it at the other end. We need to pull out and go, okay, which piece of information needs to go to which of R1, R2, and R3? So that as far as they're concerned, they see the same effect as if each one had a dedicated link. And so there are lots of different ways that this can be done. Uh, so one approach uh, is that you can do uh, time division multiplexing. So you can say, okay, we're going to have, so the three links coming in and three links going out. And then the central link needs to be faster by at least three times if we want to allow for full capacity at all times. And we could actually just divide it in time. So a little bit like uh, traffic lights divide the time between the two different flows that want to move through a single intersection uh, that we can say, right, okay, we're going to have a third of the time for each of these devices. Uh, so this is uh, one way to do that. And we can then get these multiple uh, logical links where each device, as we say, behaves as if it has an end-to-end -end link dedicated to itself, um, but over the single shared resource, which is then cheaper because you only need one of them instead of three. And right, so that's one approach. Uh, another approach is that you can use frequency division multiplexing. So again, this is this can happen on cabled links and it can happen on wireless links. It's perhaps a little bit more common on wireless links, where you know a particular link might, for example, be a twenty megahertz wide band, and we can actually say, well, we've got twenty users. We can actually divide it into twenty-one megahertz slices that are wide enough for each uh, to use. And in fact, actually, we can use more. We can use both of these together. So you can do time and frequency domain multiplexing, so that you can actually have many uh, pieces of communication going over at the same time in these different frequency bands, and with the time slotting uh, to go through. So this is actually often how, uh, particularly two G and three G cellular networks, uh, tended to do the uh, 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 the communications. A new approach is that you can do uh, statistical multiplexing, and so there's a uh, a number of different ways that you can do that. So you can have, uh, you know, the, the traffic can be labeled uh, to support it going through, or for example, in some of the wireless communications links, the encoding is not done at a particular frequency or at a particular time. Uh, it's actually combined with uh, a piece of information that uniquely identifies the channel so that it is statistically spread over the channel so that each of these links only adds a small amount of interference to each other and can still be reliably uh, pulled out. But 
whatever way you do it, again, you're going to end up with uh, you know, the, the data, these logical links being transferred uh, through and a flow, which is the stream of data going from one node to another. And that can be whether that's packages or uh, packets or message based um, or a logical data stream uh, itself. And so yeah, th there's a bunch of different ways to do that. Now, in terms of the prioritization uh, of things, we also might want to go, well, do all of them need the same amount of data or is it equally important for all of them? If there is an emergency phone call versus regular phone calls, maybe we want to give that a higher priority. We might want to promise it a higher quality of service, um, as is often spoken about in computing networks. Uh, and otherwise, <coughs> you know, you could have different approaches to uh, when the packets come out onto the shared link. You could do round robin where you take one from each of the inputs and you keep doing that so that you kind of get a fair share use in that regard. Or it might just be as each packet comes in, you grab the next packet that arrived in time order and you put it out. Um, so there's two different ways of being fair in that regard. Uh, and it really, it depends what you're trying to achieve as to what the particular fairness metric is uh, that you may want to optimize. Uh, and so then, you know, these kinds of resource sharing things will happen at different scales as well. So we've got LAN, MAN and WAN here. So LAN is local area network. MAN is metropolitan area network. So that might be city size, whereas the LAN might be inside a building or inside an organization. And WAN will be a wide area network. So that might span across a country or across an entire, uh, across the entire globe. And so the kind of uh, algorithms that you'll use uh, for prioritization will differ at those scales because you may have for a LAN context, much more control over what the peak uh, traffic utilization looks like and what the peak demand will look like and what the, the peak speeds you want to achieve are. And so you might have more redundancy, you might have less sharing of links required Whereas at the WAN end, you might be going over the public internet and uh, that might be quite constrained, uh, in fact, as it uh, goes through. So, and my blasted camera, uh, I think, has decided to go flat. Uh, but we're just about at the end uh, there anyway. Uh, and finally, we have a the idea of a, a system area network that maybe a little bit scale invariant it's where you're looking at the entire system that you're trying to achieve so for the internet that would be global potentially uh, but you might have a, a dedicated network uh, at a smaller scale uh, that's relevant as well so yeah th there's a bunch of different approaches uh, and different scales and uh, the, the different kind of context that you then need to respond to uh, and in all of these you have the potential issue of congestion where the network resources exceed uh, the capability of the network to deliver, in which case then the quality of service and these prioritization measures actually become much more important for ensuring the best possible delivery of service for all of the users of the network uh, when it's not able to meet them all. Uh, and this is not unlike in society where you might have, uh, you know, prioritization of resources, uh, for example, to, you know, the, the sick and the elderly in terms of healthcare, uh, where that's needed. Uh, versus the, the younger, fitter and healthier, we go, okay, well, actually, they can probably wait a little longer to see a doctor rather than someone who already has uh, some chronic health condition. So anyway, thank you again uh, for watching and we'll see you in the next video. Again, leave comments below uh, if there's any questions or thoughts or feedback that you would like to give. Thank you.